Hi everyone, this is a follow on from the previous video and uh, I want this time to somehow use Excel to count up the number of times I do this experiment and end up choosing a cat and a dog as my two pets. So in order to uh, get Excel to start making these sorts of decisions, I have to use a formula called IF. Now, you see how it says logical test. Logical test is a comparison, whether things are the same, not the same, uh, etc. So my first step, I'm going to say, is the value in this cell here equal to, and I'll use the word dog, because it's text, I have to put inverted commas around it. That's just the logical test. Now, what value do I want displayed if that is true? Let's have the number one. And what value do I want if that is false? Let's have the value zero. Close off the brackets. So reading that, we have if the value stored here equals dog, then it'll come out as a one stored in this cell. Otherwise, there'll be a zero. Remember, when I press enter, it'll recalculate. Is that equal to dog? No, that's why it's a zero. Let's copy that down a few rows and see what we've got. Wherever there's zeros, it meant it was false. Not too, ah, there's one. So I did that, that one's a dog. There's another one, there's a dog. So that seems to be working nicely. Now, I said in the introduction that I'm interested in selecting either a dog or a cat, aren't I? So let's add to our formula, let's extend our formula. Let's say, what if A6 e equals cat? Now at the moment, if I were to press enter, I would get an error because I've got two conditions sitting here when Excel only expects one logical test. I have to somehow tell Excel to choose between them. I'll put a comma between them. I'll put brackets around them. And I have to tell Excel to choose to use this one or to use this one. So I do that with the word all. And it didn't like the extra spaces that I've typed. So I'll just say, yes, please tidy that up for me. The formula now reads, if A6 equals a cat or if A6 equals a dog, then return the value one, otherwise return the number zero. I'll copy that down the rest of the column. This time there's a lot more ones in the column because wherever there's the word cat or dog, now there's one that says bird, it's a zero. Fish, it's a zero. Cat, it's a one. This formula now is telling me any time I had a cat or a dog in this row. Now that cell. Let's copy that across. Now it's, I, I didn't use any dollar signs. The references have updated to column B and I'll copy that one down as well. Now, this one's telling me if I have a cat or a dog for my first choice. This one's telling me if I have a cat or a dog for my second choice. What I'm really interested in is if I selected a cat and a dog when I was at the pet store. So I need a formula here that combines both of the previous results with the logical connective and. So that one and that one. I can reference the cells because the one and the zero in uh, computers are also equivalent to a true value and a false value. And there I have it. Let's read that through. If C6 and D6, if both of them are true, if both of them are ones, then I get the one. That means I had either a cat or a dog in the first one and the opposite one in the second one. Remember I set this up that there were no duplicates. Copy them down. If there's a one here, it means both of them were true. Cat, dog. Coming further down, so that one was a dog, but it was a fish, so it wasn't a cat and a dog selected together. Uh, this one down here, the dog was first, the cat was second, but it's still true in the sense that I selected the cat and the dog from the pet store. Order was not important to me. This column here is putting a one every time the experiment was a success. If I want to know how many times the experiment was a success, I just want to um, add up those numbers. There it is. The experiment was successful once. Uh, I'll write the word success here. Now what was the, uh, the total sample size here? Well, I could count them up. 
or I could use the Excel formula count and I'll just highlight that column what does Excel do with the formula count it counts the number of uh, entries in that column which were numbers well they're all numbers so it counts them all now if I want my probability of success you guessed it I need to say the number of successful outcomes divided by the total number of outcomes and this time I had two successes out of 19 about a 10 roughly 11 percent chance of success uh, would that match my theoretical probability very very roughly because I have such a small sample size to extend the simulation I would just copy these rows further down many hundreds maybe even thousands of times I would update the formulas at the top to count all of them that were successful and count all of the total and then I would expect a an experimental probability which is what this is to be a lot closer to the theoretical one uh, if you think carefully about it what are the chances of selecting a cat and a dog randomly if you were to pick two from four it's a one in six chance so I would be expecting in uh, the long run to get this success probability here around about 0.16 that's all I uh, think that's plenty for you to think about and uh, you can use this idea in your own simulations to uh, count up the number of things that are happening.